Hey guys, welcome back to another exciting episode of Your Mall. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's another way to say ultra ultra Your Mall. <laughs> so uh, we are on uh, Reflection Four. <laughs> three sixty nine. I, I, three, I keep yeah. count. <laughs> we're, we're talking we're about Your Mall. It's four. Yeah. Uh, it's um, it's th- three sixty nine technically. So we're three sixty nine. But, but yes, okay. But, but ultra ultra Your Mall Four. Um, uh, but yeah, so th- this book tonight is, uh, it's called, it's called In Praise of Slowness, Challenging the Cult of Speed by Carl Honor, I think is how you pronounce his last name. And it's, and it's a two part series on this one. Um, mm, so you must have liked so this one. I did. It was, it was an interesting, uh, it was an interesting little book. So it was about, um, well, the, I started off this, the reflection by, if I, if I, you can summarize this book by basically saying this is a book about not running for trains. So I think this is a book that you would really like. True. Mm. <laughs> uh, uh, the, okay. Um, uh, it's, I, it's, yeah, I like it's that. A, it's called "In Praise of Slowness: Challenging the Cult of Speed." Um, it's uh, I mean, it's a it's a book about not running for trains. I mean, it's it's what it is. Um, and uh, it it was, it was an interesting book. Um, uh, because as much as I know one of your core values is I don't run for trains. That's still stuck on my considering core value list, right? You know, um, mm-hmm. I do run for trains and I, I like running for trains. Um, the, I, I love go, go, go. I love exploring new train. The problem for me has always been what trains am I on and what train mm-hmm. and where, and where am I, and where am I going? Right. You know, if I'm, if uh, I don't mind jumping from train to train, if it's going in the right direction. Right. You know, and that's, um, and that's kind of what this reflection was about is like, it's, you have to take the time to sit and, and make sure that you're, that you're on the right train tracks and you're on the right, you know, train path, I guess, if you will, if you're going to be jumping from train to train, like I do, but I, I'm not good at it. I wish I could go slower. I, um, it, there's, you know, I, I'm, uh, I was just writing about this actually today. Um, uh, I just finished this book. I don't know if I told you this, but I just finished this book called, um, uh, adult ADHD. Um, mm-hmm. uh, anyway, it was. It's a really interesting book and, and it's got, got my brain like, you know, spinning all over the place. But, you know, bottom line is I, I mean, I definitely, you know, this is, that's who I am. I, I, I mean, I'm somebody that has always been nonstop, go, 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 talk, 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 run, 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 fast, fast, fast. Like, you know, like this is, this is who I am. Like I, I've told you that that little circle, the panic stretch, you know, mm-hmm. um, comfort zone. Like I'm, I'm somebody that, you know, unfortunately for me, you know, this is actually exactly what your tempo justo is, really. Um, so your 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 tempo justo is what he talked about in this book as, um, it's a musical term for, for for correct time, right? So so what I've discovered is my tempo justo is I can be in this panic zone for a really long period of time, and I can sustain that for a really long period of time, and I kind of and it kind of gives me energy because it's it, it doesn't kind of it does give me energy. Like I I love I love going fast, and I love ambiguity, and I love problem solving, and I love you know, challenges and I, and I, and I, and I love doing it all. But the problem is, is when you put me into a, a train that I don't care about and I'm doing all that and I, I start to derail, right. You know, like my tempo justo is doing all that kind of stuff in something that I really care about on the right train, going to the right place. Right. You know, like IPC, the Indianapolis pickleball club is, is, is very much so the right train for me. Right. Like I don't, I've told you right now, I'm pretty calm. Like, I mean, I, I'm, I've been running around like crazy and, and I'm okay. Like, and it's okay. Cause I'm excited about where this project's going to go and what we're going to do and how we're going to help people and what this means for the rest of my life. And, you know, and, um, and it's been a wild, it's been a wild, it's been a wild, wild, wild time of my life at this point in time. I mean, I, I, I want to vomit, like thinking about spending any more money. Like, I mean, honestly, every time I think about <laughs> writing another check, like, I just want to, I want to puke. It makes me, I, I throw up a little bit in my mouth. Or, um, I'm like, wait, you want, you want another, you want, you want, I, I was arguing with this guy today about like, you know, I'm like, like, you know, hundreds of dollars matter to me at this point in time, you know, $500, $1,000. Like, it seems like everybody wants another 400, 5,000, $2,000, whatever. It's like, it's just these tiny little paper cuts over and over and over again are just driving me nuts. Right. Yeah. But like a thousand these- paper cuts. Death by a thousand paper cuts for sure. And, uh, and like, I never, like, if you just told me I'd just write one big check for like a hundred grand or whatever, I'd be like, okay, that would be more tolerable than, than, than every single day having to wake up going, That's oh, I need more this, I need merciful. that, I need this, I need this, I need that. It is. It, it really it's is. like, just chop my head off. Right. Uh, you know, and, and then just, with one, and then let me figure it out. Whack, let me heal. It, but uh, <laughs> to, to uh, have, uh, to have, you know, death by a thousand paper cuts, that's torture. 
exactly. It, it's it's it, it, it's and it's okay because it's torture for something that I care deeply about, right? Like, and and that's kind of the point of all this is is your like your tempo justo is your stretch zone, and like we talked about, like you know your stretch mm-hmm. zone and your panic zone. The only difference is is you're doing it for stuff that you care about, you know, and um and that's I think that's really what you know this is about, and you can't get to that point in time unless you slow the fuck down. And make sure that you're on the right train, right? You know, like mm-hmm, I don't, mm-hmm. and, and like that, that's that's really it. So, like anyway, that's my that's the, that's the reflection for the night. So, love to get your thoughts. Yes, you are exactly right. I mean, the only reason why we don't run for train is because we want to go fast by going slow. Right. Right. Because yes. that that's the premise. It's like if you want to go fast and you took the yeah, wrong slow. train. Let's say I'm I'm from Houston. I want to go to to Dallas, right? If I go east, right, and I go fast, right, then I'm actually further, fast, like further faster away from right. where I want to go. And then when right. I when I realize it, well, I'm really, really effed, right, in, in terms of I'm completely off course and I'm right. further away than I was originally uh, was at. So if I just slow down for a little bit, okay, analyze what kind of train that I need to be on, and be kind of sure that I want to be on that train. And then you take the train from Houston to Dallas, and therefore it's right. faster take a, take a if, train. You, it's fine. if you if you slow down for a bit. And so that right. is a whole point of the one for trains. So mm-hmm. it is not about being slow. It's about being fast. But you can't go fast unless you know you're on the right path. And so yep. you have to do that. And so I don't, I mean, it, it's one of those things where, it sounds counterintuitive and it sounds like some mumbo jumbo kind of things. Hey, you got to slow down to go fast. I mean, it's, <laughs> you think about it on the surface, it doesn't make sense, but you, well, it doesn't make, it, it, it makes it just as much sense as, as helping other people is actually selfish, you know? Um, like it, it, mm-hmm. it, 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 it doesn't, that's the point is like, that's what evolution tells us to do. Right. You know, we're, we're we don't have a, that's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to slow down, like to go faster. Like you're saying like that is, but, but it doesn't, it doesn't on its, on the surface, like, you know, on our, in our logical mind in our, in our, with our, with our writer, it doesn't make a lot of sense to say, well, if you're going fast, just keep going faster. It's probably what we should do, you know, like, you know, no, but like you're, you're exactly right. Actually, I had in this quote in here, Dar- Darren Hardy has a, a saying that he's done, you know, you got to go slow to go fast. Right. You know, and, um, mm-hmm. uh, and like, I'm, I'm actually learning this right now in um, um, a tennis application. Um, I've told you forever, like, I, I you know, I'm a, I'm 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 a really fast player. Um, uh, meaning, like, I mean, like physically, I'm like I, I'm just really I'm really quick um, around the court. Like when people play me, like you know, that's that's kind of my hallmark. Is they're like, oh my god, Chris, Chris can get to anything. You know, like it's it, it it's barely anything that's gonna be out of my reach, kind of thing. And I'm I'm just really quick and I'm bursty and I'm fast, right? And I and I and I and I have a lot of endurance too. I can run and run mm-hmm. and run all day long. And I and that's that's kind of like one of those that's one of those things that I can hang over other people usually is like, hey, if we're gonna we're gonna play this game, like I can do this better than you, kind of thing. Um, but my problem has always been though, um, I, I have a great return to serve, I have a great ground strokes, I can I can run all day long, I have great competitiveness, you know, all those good things. I have the worst fucking serve that I've that you, of anybody that I've ever seen that is I mean by, by far like you know I mean I'm I'm talking by multitudes you know like I have the worst serve of anybody that is the at a, that is at the level that I have that I'm at mm-hmm. right now right like and uh, and I I overcome that with my other strengths right but like but I've this is this is talk about your backhands right you know I, this is a game where you can't avoid your backhands like my serve is a backhand like I mean I I it's supposed to be an advantage and it's actually a, a massive disadvantage for me. Right. You know, and um, uh, uh, anyway, how this relates to going slow to go fast. So um, a book that I just finished uh, last week, actually, is called it's called Psycho Cybernetics. Um, and it's about um, uh, using your mind to basically to control the machinery of your body, oh, sure essentially. Right. Body. Whatever. It doesn't mm-hmm, matter. Mm-hmm. It's, it's mm-hmm. kind of it's kind of a weird it's, it's a bit of a weird book, but it's like one of those famous like old books that I thought I just had to read kind of thing. Anyway, they talk a lot about visualization in it, right? And um, uh, and here's the thing that I was like, why not? I'll give it a fucking try. So I was playing tennis twice last week and I um, and, and I decided to, to eat before each serve. I was going to visualize my serve. I was going to slow down. 
was going to play it out of my mind. I was going to look exactly where I wanted to hit it and think, hey, that's where I'm going to go. And then I would, you know, what ended up happening? Like, this is no joke. What ended up happening? What 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 normally happens, what goes through my brain normally when I'm serving is, a, I don't have a bad serve. I can serve it hard if I want to, right? Like, I just, I just for whatever reason in tennis, I get, I get all fucking in my head, right? And I, and I go, okay, it's first serve. I'm like, you got, you got to hit a great first serve, Chris, because you know, if you, you know, if you miss it, you're fucked on your second serve. Your second serve is horrible. You're either going to double fault or you're going to hit your little stupid dink second serve just to get in and play the point. So you better get your first serve in. And then I miss it. And I'm like, oh God, all right. Now I'm at my second serve. The first thing that goes in my head is, well, you're fucked. Like, you know, you're, you're, you you have a horrible second serve. Like no matter what, they're going to be at the advantage. Like you bet, just get it in, just get it in, just get it in is what I'm thinking in my head, right? This is no joke. This is what's going on in my head, right? This is, this is, how, this is the negativity that goes into my mind when I'm doing this stuff. And I, my body gets all tensed up. I throw, I throw the toss up like normal. I'm getting ready to hit it. And I'm like, just spin it in, Chris, just spin it in, just get it, spin it in, you know? And like, I can feel myself get tense. I can feel myself slow down. I can feel myself just everything go, go, breaks down mechanically. Right. And I, and I'm like, and, and it, then bad and then a bad outcome happens and i'm like see i fucking told you you dipshit you know like and this is this is what goes on in my head right so i i've just finished this book and uh and this is this goes back to your go slow and go fast right it's um i was visualizing it and i was like you know what i'm just gonna fucking i don't care what happens at all i was like i really don't give a shit about the outcome of any of these services i was playing against friends you know and i was like let's just try this out so i, I was visualizing it i was like i'm just gonna serve it throw it up i was like back forward you know whatever like i was just playing around my mind like, and, uh, and I was super calm and relaxed, like super going really slow, methodical, controlled. And I was just hitting incredible serves the entire time. Like, I I, I don't think I, de- I think I only double faulted like once, which for me um, is like a fucking miracle, you know? Um, and, uh, and, and uh, anyway, I say this, then I played again on Saturday. I was like, was, I was like, maybe that was a fluke. This was on Wednesday last week. I was like, maybe mm-hmm. that was a fluke. I played in on Saturday and I'm like, same thing happens again. And, and what I ended up just feeling, personally feeling was like, when you go slower and you go more methodically and like your body is way more ten- uh, loose, right? Everything, all your muscles are way more loose. Like everything isn't like, you know, like when, when you're, when you're, when you're running and you're running and you're running really fast and you're jumping from train to train, everything gets really tight and tense. You know, you get, that's when your back seizes up, you get your, you get muscle headaches, you get, you know, you get all these other, like the stress starts to pile up and you're, and you're sitting in your, in, in my chair downstairs, like I have for the past couple of weeks going, Oh fuck! I'm get, or I pop on this call with you, and I'm like, true. I'm about to fucking lose my. I'm I'm I can't keep my eyes open anymore. I'm tired as hell, right? You know, like like this is this is what happens when you go fast to go fast, and 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 what happens when you go slow to go fast is you go okay, like I'm just gonna visualize what I need to go do. I'm gonna focus on it. Your body relaxes. Everything just starts to flow better. You feel better. Like anyway, that that was my that was my story about you know connecting those two dots together but i don't know what do you, what do you think about that <laughs> well but we talk about this in in, in the earlier uh reflections where we're talking about you know get out of the way of your elephants right? yes and and so when you try to uh use your your system too to control your serve you will do horrible a horrible oh, you, you can't do that because the thing is, you say, "Well, All I want to take a, sh- I want to take a shortcut, and I'm going to go ahead and take control of, of my body, and I'm going to serve versus training the elephant to serve, right? Right. So, so when you say, "Okay, I'm going to serve it," right, and, and I know how to do it, and I know what I want to do, it, and I know how hard I want to do it, I want to know how much curving I want to put into the spin or whatever. You know, any of those, those things, but then you can't control your body. And so whenever you, so you know, but you can't make it happen. Right. So, so that's a, that's a fact where you, you're on the wrong bus. You're not supposed yep. to use your system two to control your body. Your body needs to be controlled by your system one, which is the elephant. Your subconscious let, has to let do that. Be free. <laughs> so, so you have to train the subconscious. And so you so say, you're, you're, you're too eager to get this done. You didn't go through the proper channels. Right. And so that's what happened is until you step back, okay, I'm going to let the elephant do what it needs to do and allow it to perform based on how it is designed, how it's trained to perform. Then right. you see the result completely massively different between. It's ma- it was massive. I mean, it was I, like, I actually was serving well. Like, I mean, I'm not even joking. It was like, it was a different human being playing the match. Like that I was playing, like, it, like it was, it was bizarre. I was like, what the fuck is happening? I was like, I am confident right now on my serve. And I was like, this is, 
like my my like my return of serve is actually as good as most people's serves. Like I I win probably more return of serves, which you're not you're supposed to be at a disadvantage when you're returning serve, right? Like my mm. I have such a great return of serve. I I never even think about it ever. Like I never fucking actually the only time I fuck up my return of serve is when I is so when I thinking. is when I is when I is, no, <laughs> It's not not just that. It's when I when I go okay, get aggressive like on this one, right? You know, and then and then like I get aggressive and then I I hit a horrible shot, right? You know, it's like the I I used to think that like I would tell myself be be loose and aggressive and then just have fun, you know, like mm-hmm. I don't I don't want to be aggressive anymore, like you know when I'm playing tennis. As a matter of fact, I kind of just want to be loose, you know, like I just I don't I don't really care, like you know if I if I blast a ball at somebody, like I can. Like, don't get me wrong, but like, I have to, I have, I have to, like you said, I have to override the elephant. And be I mean, like, you okay. have to, you have to, you have to do what your, what your elephant trains to do, because if yes. you are an aggressive player, then if you trained the elephant to be an aggressive, he always can be aggressive. He could be good at being aggressive. Right. But if you, you start changing the way he plays, then he is going to need more training without the training. He's going to. He's not gonna do well. So you can you can't say, well, I'm gonna be aggressive on this one. I'm gonna be less aggressive on the other or whatnot. It needs to be trained first. So you think about how we we start um, learning how to type on a keyboard. At first, it's easy, just very fast, easy. I probably say like three three times as faster, or even five times faster if you use two index finger and just start punching the keys. <laughs> you just start packing the keys, right? <laughs> But then, and then you go and say, "Well, I want you to put your five fingers on the keyboard, and then think about the different key that you wanna you wanna press on." Well, that's gonna take you five times slower. But right. the moment you, the moment your elephant has trained, your subconscious takes over, and it goes from like ten word per minute to like fifty word per minute or hundred word per minute. You can see how fast people type, but only right. until you are uh, you have enough time to train the elephant to do that and that's it that's a key you have to train it to do what it is that it needs to do and then you get out of the way and let it does what it was trained to do and so when when you are a player in in a certain um player style right if you train the elephant to be aggressive then aggressive said you know just be just be you and you'll be aggressive if you are a kind of player that is really you know slow and and methodical and suave in in a way then he's going to perform just like that and he's going to be very good at doing just that right and so that's what i'm saying is you know you have to get away uh get out of the way of your elephant and let your elephant do what it's trained to do same thing what bruce lee say is you know you don't think you have to feel so the feeling is what your subconscious can do thinking is what your your conscious brain can do and so in terms of the slowness, it's like you got to let go of your um, conscious thinking, your forebrain thinking in terms of, I need to do this, I need to do that. Feel it, okay, how does it feel to do you know this and the other? What are, what are the things that come up next? Let your elephant handle it naturally because I think your elephant has been through these kind of, um, I guess, different phases of your life before. So it should right. be able to make decisions should be able to navigate any kind of, um, you know, any kind of like activities that 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 you wanna you want to overcome. And so, uh, a lot of time, if you hand I've seen this before, you, you know, if you hand your your activities to your subconscious, and one of the things that I found out as well, and it's it's reason why I'm an advocate for the one for trains kind of concept is, you never get stressed out, stressed only comes from your conscious brain it never comes it from your it never comes from your your um, you know your, your, elephant. your elephant's so, never so, stressed so, <laughs> so it's the thing is what happened is whenever an elephant in for example you, are, you the point is that the stress comes from when when it when you contradict what the elephant has trained to do right you know so if, if the, elephant, the, 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 the stress comes from the conflict that, that you inflict on your own on your yes, own exactly. I mean, like that, so, that's, so your, your that's... consciousness is trained to do a certain thing, and then your 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 conscious, your forebrain, right? Once you do something that contradicts it, and then you feel this 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 knot in your stomach. That knot in the stomach creates a stress. It creates stress creates the uh, it releases a, a different kind of chemicals to kind of try to try to balance out that that feeling, and so it creates this spiral down compound effect, and you become 
completely out of whack. So for me, the the concept of one for trains has multiple benefits. It's the first thing is you're gonna be able to go farther, faster, right? The second thing is you avoid having to feel that that the icky feeling of having a knot in your stomach. And that knot in your stomach it also prevent you from having an ulcer, having the stress, having the the mental breakdown, having the, you know, a bunch of other uh, health issues that arise from it. So to me, that's why I really, really advocate and completely wants to practice the don't want for train. I mean, it doesn't matter what happened because I know I can only train some, I can only control certain things. Most things I can't control. So why try to figure out how to control what I can't control? That's just, I agree. That's just I mean, being, like, being I silly. We have our we have our grand opening on a Friday, right? And um, mm -hmm. and I told you at the very beginning of this conversation, I was like, I don't know if we're gonna make it. Uh, and I don't care. Like I really don't. I mean, a part of me like wants to go. Well, God, there's people that are already registered for events. There's things that are going on. We've been promoting this for months now, you know. And we're and I don't think we're gonna make it. And like you know, part of me could be like, well, fuck, it's all over. We're gonna we're we're a fucking joke. Things are gonna fall apart. Like blah blah blah. And like, I just don't care. Like, I'm like, we've done everything we can possibly do. I've done everything, you know, I'm not, I, there's no reason for me to go crack a whip on somebody to go yell at people. Like, I can't do anything. Like, I, I there's nothing that can be done at this point in time. It, it either is going to happen or it's not. It's a, it's up to the gods, you know, like, I mean, at this point, you know, like it's, it, like it is what it is, right? Like, and I'm not going to stress about it. Like, I, this, these are lessons that I have learned because I do agree. I, I like the idea of in praise of slowness. Like my, the, the past two months, the only reason I think that I'm even able to function right now, like, and I don't, I don't say that lightly. I mean, I'm being dead serious too. I, I strategically made my monthly challenge last month to be uh, a month of full Wim Hof method stuff, right? Um, and then this month I'm, I'm doing meditation, which also kind of was like I'm doing Wim Hof part two plus meditation now on top of it. So every morning I've been, I've gotten into the habit of waking up and just doing meditation, you know, stuff and and breathing exercises and. And honestly, I feel really good. Like, I mean, mm -hmm. like, I, I, I feel like I know I'm going, I know it's wasting time in the morning. It's not wasting time. I know, I know it's, I know it's a, a pretty expansive amount of chunk of time that I'm taking in the mornings to go do this stuff. But I start off the day and I feel, I feel a lot more in control, right. You know, of, of who, of, of the train that I want to hop on or not hop on. Mm -hmm. Right. Like, and, and then I can go do whatever I got to do for the course of that day. And it's actually been really, really helpful um, uh, of go just slowing down a little bit before I start the day out, you know, and just getting my mind right and, and like, you know, getting a little bit of breathing into me, like, you know, whatever, all this other stuff, like, and I strategically did that because I knew that like, I'm going really fast right now. Like I'm going really fucking fast. I mean, it is, it is almost insane to me how fast that I'm going right now. I, I even told Felicia this the other day, um, like, I don't know, I think this is on Saturday or something like that. And I was like, I never thought I would say this, but I, I kind of am almost jealous of my old self of going like it's it's Saturday night and I don't I don't give a shit about my job. You know, like I just don't care. Like, you know, like I, 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 I mean, it was as soon as soon as the day was over, I was like, I don't care. Like, I mean, like it's, it's over, you know, like, I mean, if somebody's got a problem. All right, maybe I'll care, you know, but like, I mean, I, I don't have to care. Like, you know, like I, I, I would either choose to care or I would choose to not care. But like, I didn't have to care. Like, I have to care. Like, there is problems that are going on that I have to solve, that I have to fix, that I have to be, you know, that, that I have to be that person right now. I am the linchpin in this whole entire operation at this point in time. Right. Mm -hmm. And like, there is no rest. Like, and I don't and I don't mind it. Like, I, I, I just I just thought I, I, I had this thought in my head I was like I've never thought I would ever say I, I kind of I kind of I kind of maybe get why people like you know that other life that I was living before like I mean I didn't have any I didn't have any I don't know if you ever have experienced this but I'm sure you have like but like you know when you're in college and you think you have like a million things to do and then and then, and then you're out of college and you're like man I'd give anything to be back in college, you know, like that's the fucking easiest thing ever. And then like before you were a parent, you're like, you know, you're like, man, I'm so busy all the time. And then you have kids and you're like, man, I'd give anything to fucking like, you know, have nothing to do. What did I fucking even do before I had kids, you know, like, and then it's like, you know, uh, you know, you know, you know, <laughs> it's like... <laughs> yeah, of course I do. I mean, but that's the thing is, you know, a lot of times we, we, we mistaking the, the time we spent mm -hmm. as important. 
because you think, right. hey, it's important for me to fix this. It's important for me to address that. It's important for me to give this person a call back. It's important for me to, you know, do certain things. But you think about it, right? In college, in college, you say, well, I have a million things to do. But you think about uh, that time now. What did you do was so important? I don't know. I have no idea. I don't, I don't even know what I did in college besides, but, you know, but, but you, feel, you felt like you had a million things to do, right? I felt but like I had a million you... things to do. <laughs> I got term papers. I got to study for this class. I got to, I got to, I got to get up before 1030 in the morning to go to a class. True. Like, you know, but, but I have to go to this party. You have to, right? you have to go night. to a party. Like, you have to go. Right. I you mean, know. how am I like, going to do that? How, how am I going to get up for my Friday class at 730 AM when I have to go out on Thursday, Thursday? That's, I don't know how to do this, you know, like, <laughs> but that's the thing is it's all perspective because you, we, we are, think that certain thing that we do is so so important it has to be done uh, regardless of what it is it could right. be you know it could be the thing you do in college or could it be a thing you do for work and say well this guy really needs me it's an emergency and he calls me you know he calls me five times in in two minutes right well it's it seems important and it makes it looks like important but i don't think it's important in the long run because you think you know what i mean think about it that you have you had that, that situation important. Have you had that situation where they're trying to get you, like they're trying to contact you, trying to get you on the phone, and then you know whatever it is, they, they get you on the phone. Do you remember what the what the situation was? No, I mean you like, wouldn't I, remember because it was important. So <laughs> because, so I, I, because I, I thought, we we, yeah. we 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 create that that um what you Carnival. call it the. You know, the imaginary, the imaginary change, right? Imaginary change yep. for yep. ourselves. You know, somebody put it, you, you put a gun to your own head and make <laughs> this into some kind of, uh, you know, like a constraint. You know, you're limit. You're, right. you're, you're you're trying to you're trying to make yourself miserable for for whatever. And just like like I said, you know, people just I don't know where I say I decide that this this month this year we should have this quarter for our company. And if you don't make it, it's like disasters. You think yes. about it. You just pull this number out of your ass. It's not like there's some number you have to make. You just make up the number and you say, well, arbitrarily, I want to hit this number. Where did you get that from? I don't know. I just, I just, I just thought we should make, you know, over Throughout $500 there. billion, dollars, you know, for, yeah. for this year, for whatever. And then $100 million billion. Uh, and then, and then you, you, you push it down to your, your manager, your directors, your managers, right. and, you know, the people, and everybody go out front. Like, oh, we have to make this. And we, we, we completely are behind, blah, blah, blah. Right? You think about that. That's a franticness. But for eons, like people have done that every single time. And for yep. eons here today, they still have the same problem, the same self-inflicted you know misery and say hey i'm I'm, I'm putting constraint on myself arbitrarily just because i was trained to do that when i was right. growing up and so that's the perspective is every single thing it's so important that you have to catch this train have to catch that train oh i missed yep. this i missed that right i missed this train because if you think about it if you if you think you missed a train you didn't spend enough time thinking about the kind of train you want to be on and the thing is, the, the the catching of the train is what we perceive as important. The the looking and the the kind of like analyzing what kind of trains we want to get on, we perceive that as a waste of time. I, I agree. I mean, like I, I this is this is no joke. I mean, that's such an important point what you just said. This is no joke at all. This whole process, the uh, the past since. December, so we're in we're in mid March now. So it's been three and a half months, or almost four months, um, mm -hmm. that I've been that I've been opening this facility at this point in time. I mean, like in earnest, you know, um, like just going balls to the wall with everything that's been going on. Um, it, I would say, if I was going to put like if we were going to call that a little mini marathon, like I was I was out of control in in January um, and early February, and and the thing that the thing that the thing that got me back on the right train was this process of reading, learning, writing, reflecting, stopping, thinking, you know, good, making sure that we're going in the right direction. That was when everything changed. I don't know if you remember this. I'm sure you do, but there was, there was like, it was like a month ago where I was like frantically being like, you know, I read this book and I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I got to go do this. I got to go do this. Like I, I know it sounded frantic, but actually that was me making sure that was me 
deciding on the right train to hop on right like you know and i i hadn't decided that before before i was before i was literally just running all over the place had no direction and like finally i had a direction of a train that i wanted to do a hop on that's why now i feel way more controlled and and okay like i mean i don't i don't even care anymore because i know what we're doing and i know why we're doing it i know how i'm leading people and i know how i'm guiding people and i know how i'm guiding myself right like and and like that's that was way more that was way Wait, that is the most important thing that has happened in this entire journey is is like I know exactly where I want to take this and and like I and I don't care what happens today or tomorrow or 5 years from now really to be honest with you. I that is I ha- I have a train that I want to jump on with this particular venture and and like and that, and and it was two it was two parts. There was two big epiphanies with this whole thing was one, I don't want to work there. I want to play here. Like that's it. I want to build a place mm-hmm. where I want to play. That is that is Point point blank period. That is this whole this whole thing in a nutshell can be summed up as Chris is building a place for him to go, for himself to go play pickleball. It's why it's where it is. It's why it's 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 why it's only down five fucking minutes down the street for me. Like you know, I'm serious. Like it's why it's five minutes down the street for me. It's why it's with the people that I want to play with in general. Mm-hmm. It's why I'm designing all this technologically so I can so I can make it easy for my fucking self to go walk in and play whenever I want to fucking play. And that's why I'm, you know, uh, uh, w- want to be very event heavy because I want to go play with more people. Like I hate, I hate always trying to find, you know, you know, even, even, even there's never enough people to play pickleball with or tennis with, right? Like that's why I love events with pickleball tennis and tennis events, right? That's why I love my industrial league. It's why I love my USCA league masters. It's why I love going to open play nights and stuff like that. Like I don't have fucking time to coordinate with, I mean, to find the perfect group of 10 people or whatever that always have availability that can be near where I need them to be. I don't have, I don't know how to fucking find that. And I I don't know that that exists. Right. That's like, that's like trying to find the perfect mentor, you know, like, I mean, it's like there, there are perfect mentors out there where people accidentally stumble upon like this amazing relationship that somebody is like right place, right time, perfect scenario, whatever, where they're like, I'm done with my career and I'm getting ready to start my career. And I want to help this person and dedicate a lot of time and coach them and whatever. Like, sure. But like most mentorships are kind of like, hey, I need to, I need a mentor. Okay, I'll mentor you for like five minutes because that's all the time I can give you. You know what I mean? Like, and and mm-hmm. like, and then we move on, right? You know, like, and then and then you're left going, well, where do I find the next mentor? I don't know the next thing that I need to go find. Well, go read a fucking book. You can go find a million mentors. You know, like, and and they'll talk to you forever, and they can tell you all that they need to know. You know, and anyway, the reason why I'm saying this is like. I, I, that was epiphany one, but I didn't think I didn't learn this until I learned this in a book and then I wrote about it and then we'll, we'll talk about it down the road, but I'm talking to you about it now. Right. It was going slow to get that, to get that perspective, to understand that. And then perspective number two was, okay, great. This is, I'm building a place for, for this, for me, like what matters to me? And it, it's the events that matter to me. I don't give a shit about the amenities. I don't give a shit about, you know, like, do we have a locker room? Do we have a bunch of bathrooms? Are we going to have like, the best food and beverage place ever is it going to be this really shiny you know i i i keep seeing friends sending me like you know um uh um tiktok videos of like pickleball places opening up in their in their in the cities they live in they're like oh my god this place is crazy you know it's amazing like these are all like fucking top golf places right you know these this is this is this is like i don't want anything to do with that i i, I like food and beverage is a sideshow for me because I want to be able to support events better with it. That's it. Like I don't, I don't, I don't fucking want just people coming to go eat at my <laughs> fucking place, like, like or drink. But I don't, I don't need some amazing place where people are like, I just, oh, I just really want to go hang out over there. I don't want you to fucking hang out there. Like if you're not fucking playing pickleball or you're not eating and drinking at an event that is about pickleball, like then I don't fucking want you in the fucking facility. Right, because you want to eat about. and go to the restaurant for it. You want to drink. Go to the go fucking to restaurant. Like, <laughs> yeah, right, go to a bar. Like go to Top Golf. Go to some, go to go to chicken and pickle. Go to go to all the other places that are opening up that are spending millions and millions and millions of dollars to build these fucking, you know, th- these entertainment centers. Right. This isn't an entertainment center. This is a place for people to play pickleball and to meet other people that want to go play fucking pickleball, right? So these were two fundamental things that I did not realize of mm-hmm. what I was building and why I was trying to build this and how I wanted to tell other people, like, you know, and, and the team. So that's why I don't even care anymore. Like, I, 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 I really don't. I, I, it, was, it was a time to slow down, to realize this stuff. And, and to learn and to reflect and to and to go slow to go fast like because now I know what do I want to focus on like because you could say hey we need better 
We need, we need better amenities. You know, I don't want to focus on that because like, then I would have to go raise a shitload of money, go find other people to go, you know, go deal with a bunch of contractors. Like, I don't fucking care if somebody comes in the facility and says, well, Chris, well, you don't have like, you know, IRC has better locker rooms. Did you see their locker rooms that just opened up? Yeah, I saw them. They're amazing. I agree. I was playing tennis there the other day. They're incredible. I, I don't care. Like, <laughs> I, I like go there. Like, that's not this place. Like, this is a place for people that want to go play pickleball and they come to great events where people can go play, you know, where they can deal with the other stuff versus like, you know, going to play to a, a, a fucking country club. This isn't a country club. Like, I don't want you to, this. It will never be. And I don't want it to be that way. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing, you know, when when you have taken a time out to you know, reflect on what it is you want to do, like pick the bus, pick the train you want to be on. Right. And then once you get on that train, you know for sure you're on the right train, right? And you can go as fast as you want and it still feel like, oh, okay, uh, I, I'm good with it. I, but I if, you, it, if yeah. you still have like any doubts in your mind about whether or not you're on the right train, that's gonna create the, the the havoc on your brain in your in your mind about okay did I make the right decision and you're gonna have right. that that uh, that frantic zone, but if you're on the right train you get to the point where you you you're gonna be like I don't care about this I don't care about that because you know exactly what it is that you want what is this train gonna take you because right. they can't say well I'm going from Houston to Dallas I'm gonna go from, you know all the way up oh why did I see Orlando Florida I think. Well, I don't right. care. I don't need Orlando Florida. I'm not going down the plane. I'm going to die. Right? So right. that's the thing is when you get to the point where like you are right now is you have understood and you have had enough confidence in yourself to know that you're on the right path, on the right train. You can go fast and it seems like it's slow because you're not right. saying, well, you, you want to open. How fast can you paint that court? How fast, how fast can you put in this? this um you know the security door locks or whatever get them as fast as you can can you do them tonight can you do it tomorrow whatever but the faster you can be but if you don't understand and you you still have doubts and i don't know maybe let me think about it right so it slows yeah. you down once you once you still have the doubts in your and mind it gives you about a fucking headache it gives you a it fucking does. headache it like, it it gives like you a it, headache it just, that's where the stress comes from that's where it, it is you downward you it's can't the tension, sleep, it's you the, can't yeah. eat, you can't enjoy the food, you can't enjoy the, <laughs> the, the you know, the, the, the little, the, the little positive in your life, you know? Yeah, I'm, I'm like, I'm, I just started laughing when you said you can't sleep, you can't eat. I, I was joking with my wife, like, I mean, up until about, up until I had this epiphany about a month ago, uh -huh. like, um, uh, I, I wasn't sleeping very well and I wasn't eating very well. I was actually forgetting to eat sometimes during the day, which is really weird for me because that's not like, I, I'm not, I'm not somebody that forgets to like take care of myself, but I was going so fast, like that. I literally was forgetting to eat, you know? And, um, uh, and I, and I was joking to her. I was like, man, you know what the best diet is? It's like, it's stress. You know? <laughs> <laughs> well, like, there, you, you are guaranteed there's, some, to lose truth, there's <laughs> some truth in it. There's some truth in it, but you know, that's, that's where, um, you know, you, you only see one, you know, versus what reality is going to, uh, to, take from you because you know stress does make you lose weight but you know yeah. it's it, you you're paying in a bad way it's not a good thing for it. <laughs> <laughs> right. it is not it, it is not a, it is not that is not a badge of honor to say like you know like you know you get stressed and lose weight no I, i'm actually but like, but you, you you get my point that once you yeah. when you still going as fast or probably even faster than you going before yeah but yeah. in your mind right it slows down because you have enough confidence in, I know what the priorities are. In, in, in yourself, that you're on the right train, right? Right. You, basically, whatever that you do, anything that is, is like the, the non-relevant, right? Anything that's not relevant to you, it's basically ignored by your, your brain. Yeah. So you can focus on going fast, and because you only focus on that certain activities, right? They say, well... I don't have a billion things to do. I only have these many things to do. I just need to get this right. thing done and I'm go play, right? You think yep. about it, all the other thing has been like completely shielded away from 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 your your purview. And that's where you are going fast right now, but for you say, oh, "Okay, I'm I'm back to myself. I'm not doing a billion things anymore and I'm and you know, like you know, you sleep better, right? You can eat, you don't yep. forget to eat yep. anymore." Because before right. You just do the things without having to take the time to think about where you want to be, that what train you want to get on. That creates a lot of different, um, I guess, like options or decisions you have to make, and you haven't made yep. them. 
it, it's, it drains on your brain. And when it drains your brain, you think you have a billion things to do. Just like in college, like a lot of things that you, oh, we think like, insane. oh, I mean, it's like we, we go to college and we have nightmares about missing assignments and, and right. you know, late to class and, and what, getting back what grades joke. or whatever, I mean, right? <laughs> and when you think about it today, it's like, <laughs> what, what a joke. I mean, like it's, it's, it is and, a joke. And it, it, it's, it's almost like comical because uh, from, from this regard, it, I've never, I've never understood this. Like it, it doesn't make any sense at all. I'm paying for you to torture me. Yes, you are. <laughs> like I don't, I, I don't mm. understand it. Like I've never understood it. I'm like, wait a minute, bitch. Like you know, or sorry, or or dick. Like professor or professor, <laughs> whatever, male or female, it doesn't matter. Right. Yeah. I there's not there's. I'm like, wait a minute, motherfucker. Like, <laughs> aren't I paying your fucking salary? Like, yes. With my goddamn student loans. Like, and you're telling me. You're stressing my ass out? Like, what the fuck? Like, you know, like, I, if I don't want to learn your shit, I'm not going to learn your shit. Like, I mean, I don't understand. I, don't I mean, I want to pay you. You work works. on my schedule, not right? on your I schedule. Like, I, and and, and, and you penalize me for being late, right? <laughs> yeah, you're telling, and you're telling me. You're I'm your boss. Me. I'm paying you. you. Yeah. I, what? Like, what? You don't have a job, motherfucker. If I don't pay it's your goddamn It's an upside fucking, down world. I mean, I know. You think I about I don't how, even how, understand. How asinine that is. It's, it's completely, you know, blows your mind. I've never, can you name me any other scenario? And can you name me any company that you would ever go work for that you pay to work at a company where they could then tell you, hey, I need you to do this, this, and this by this, this, and this time. And if you don't do that, like, you're not going to be able to move on to another company to go pay them. Some... Like, I mean, I don't even know what, I don't even know how I, my, my, my brain <laughs> wants to explode to even think about that. Like I, that is one, that is me. one ingenious scam. <laughs> I know what in the world. Like, I mean, like, like you feel like you need to do it. Like, you know, and you're like, why it's am like... I doing this? Like, it's like you pay, you pay, right? And you, you strive to get into college. You strive to say, well, I want you to select me to be my torturer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to work my ass off so I can be the elite of the elite and be tortured like the elite of the elite <clears throat> because I'm paying you for that. You know, like, yeah. it, I mean, and it, like, and that makes, that makes zero make it no makes, sense. No sense. It makes less than zero sense. Like, I, I, I can't think of any other thing in my in that I've ever done in my entire life where there's a corollary to that. I can't think of any other system that there's a corollary to that. No, I can't think of it either. I mean, I mean, <laughs> what do you pay for? That somebody else gets to dictate to you what you do. I don't know. I mean, that's just it's just opposite of what human human beings, ah! um, you know. Ah, a person, a personal trainer, like, a, like if you got a personal trainer, you know, you pay them to tell you what, 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 how to work out, when to work out, how to work out, what to eat. I guess. I mean, right. I mean, like, but, but then, but then again, if, if you're not liking it, you're going to go, I don't want to do that. And they're going to yeah. go. Okay. I'm going to fail you. I mean, like, like I mean. <laughs> I mean, if I told, I used to have a personal trainer when I worked at a HC one, and and uh -huh. they would you know, pay for it, right? And and if and if I was like, hey, Brett, like his name is Brett, I worked out with him for like six years or something, and uh, and and I was like, if I would have told, I, I told Brett what I wanted, and Brett delivered, but if but if Brett ever pushed me to the point in time where like yeah. I was like, I don't want to do that, yeah. Brett, and he was like, uh, I mean, I, there's no way that he's gonna be like, well, you. Well, no, I think I think trainer. as far I, I as far as the trainer is concerned, I think you know, for me, even if I have a trainer, I wouldn't like. I would do what he asked me to, but I wouldn't be tortured, right? Because you say, well, you know, let's say right. let's say he say, well, I need you to do three sets of you know, uh, one one thirty bench press, yeah. right? And 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 need you do ten each, and you do yeah. and you do seven, right? If seven, I can't do seven, I'm going to stop. I'm not going to go I'm push and go eight. Like, you can yell as much as you want. It's like, eh, I'm paying you. I'm still the boss. But in college, it's different. It's in college, you have nightmares. I That's mean, true. you think about it. Kids even commit suicide for having a bad grades. Right? I, I, I'm not laughing at suicide. I'm, I'm laughing that that even needs a, is even a thing. That, that's like, 
That's like not being able to do 10 reps with your trainer and then going, well, I just, I guess I'm just going to go jump off of a, of a building. Like, you know, like, you know, like, because I can only do seven. Whole, the whole different level because, you know, it's, it's true mental torture. I mean, for the most part, it's just mental torture. Like I say, for whatever reason, we've been pounded into our heads about you have to succeed in college for whatever reason to win. Like, otherwise your life is over. It's like, <laughs> It's like this this thing, like people are going like oh like one time, you know, when we were doing um I had this uh, the comp sci uh, class where uh, for whatever reason we we do we do work together, we do a program together, right? And and some people just you know we work on together and they will take the, the, the program, but they don't change the name of the you know, when you start programming, you write comments in, in, in the code names and blah blah, right? Um, but we work the program together and somebody turns in um a duplicate without changing the names in there right and so the teacher would give a zero and basically that goes on like this whole like fucking like ruin someone someone some kid's life and i mean that's how serious this thing is and people are like begging and and parents get involved and it's like it's like a whole emergency sort of scene that I say, well, I should step back and say, okay, you, um, whatever, give me zero. I don't care. Uh, yeah, 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 I cheated. <laughs> what are you gonna bad, do, you know? right? Yeah. But that's the thing, oh, and it, it's it's so it's so serious in that setting that, like you, like I said, you know, there's a lot of kids that um, we get to the yeah, point where they are so depressed, jump off the bridge, and right. they jump off the bridge. I mean, that's that's where you know we see, but I mean, that's the extreme. The extremity right. is you know, where they go and they 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 commit suicide, but. There's other like lesser extremity where people like kids are completely um, suffer in different ways. You know, they, they could oh, yeah. be like depressed. They could be like really um, zoned out and, and become like strange or whatever. But in, in some cases, like health wise, they deteriorate the health as well. Oh, for sure. But, or, like, or they get diagnosed with some bullshit disorder and they get put on medication and, you know, think that they're they're broken, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. like uh yeah it's yeah it's 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 never it's never good it, the bottom line is when you're running for trains and you're running for the wrong train like you know it it nothing good comes of it um like so but make it's sure easy. you're on the right it's still so, but the the point of, of of this is it's so easy to be on a wrong train it is it's, so it's if, very you, if you run for train the 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 probability of you going on the on the wrong train by chasing a train is that more than 70% or 80% of the time you will pick the wrong one. I agree. Right? I mean, because just, it, you're just you, random. You it's just haphazard. Haphazard because the, the chance yeah. of us to, hey, there's a train come by. Oh, I got to chase. I got to catch that train. What is the chance that's the train you want to be on? It's a low probability. I agree. So that Very means low. that you don't run for train. It's actually a fundamental need. You, S you can't sit at the say, goddamn well, station. <laughs> Until you yep. find the right place, don't don't leave until you know. Make that's sure, the right make place. sure that you're on the right train. Make sure you right. check for the the train registration numbers or whatever, and make sure that it goes the right direction that you expect it to go. Because if you don't, right, you will be further away from your destinations, and you're gonna you're gonna have a panic. You're gonna have a panic attack. <laughs> and, and, and to me, that's where the stress comes from. And so, if Agreed. you just take the time to think about what trains you need to be on and use that time wisely, then you won't have to, you know, be in a panic zone, in a stress mode, deteriorate your, your health and completely, you know, ruin your life. I mean, you know, what some some people take yes. to, this, to the extremity of, you know, this this pushed me back so, so much that I don't really know I can get out of it. I mean, I, I'm completely overwhelmed and that just derails them. From from you know being being who they need to be. Right, agree, I agree, um, hundred percent. So this is a I think it's probably a good time to you know put put a pin on this one. But uh, uh, tomorrow, I think this is a book you need to read, Drew. Um, I think you would I think you would enjoy this. This is like right up your alley. Um, I okay. I, I think. In praise uh, of slowness. <laughs> yeah, in praise of slowness, and then uh, and then part two tomorrow is is take a siesta. Okay. So I mean, these yeah. are these are all these are all these are all true. You know, this is this is this is very much so a, a true book. Like you know, this book? is not okay. a yeah. this is not this is not a Chris book. This is a this is a book that Chris can learn from because you know. Well, I uh, think Chris needs to needs to incorporate the don't want for training methodology into his core values 
because like I say, it's a it's a need. You have to you have to do this. It's it's not something that because the thing is, I know you want to run fast, but in order for you to be the fastest you can be, you have to slow down first. Oh, I know. I mean, I, I just one hundred percent. I, it, I it's like, just a system. I was right? at, dude. I was out of fucking control like a, a month and a half ago. Like out of control. I mean, like I was like, this is like this this whole thing was out of. I mean, I I know that you saw it. I mean, you could probably tell because the, the thing, the right thing now, is, but, you, know, know? you think about you, you being you running so fast, so fast. The thing is, you think about what you have done uh, in in the. Two months ago, you start looking for like corporate the corporate uh, sponsors and this that, and you run so fast that you have like meetings after meetings with a bunch of these you know uh, HR directors whatever. And if one of them took hold, you have been you would have been on the open path today. Oh, one hundred percent. And actually, I'm glad that that. So like th this is it's actually refined my this this whole focus on events has refined my my conversations with them now where I'm like look. This is the best thing ever for corporate team building events. I mean, it really is. Like, it, like we can do this, and we could do this all day long and rinse and repeat. And it's something I think that we can add value. And this is a great place to go to host these things. Like, I, I don't. You want to do custom leagues with us? We'll do custom leagues with you. I don't want to sell them memberships anymore because that just fucks with my rest of my my, my, mm -hmm. my customers. That's what I'm saying. Is because uh, you're um, running yeah. so fast in in yeah. that and those, those times, everything, everything. right? You had meetings, back to back meetings with a bunch of the directors. And if one of those had hold and the, the strategy for you to, to kind of like yeah. sell that membership for them to do whatever they want, they probably have taken over your facility today. Oh, they would you, for sure. And, and, yeah. and the events that you had in mind for you to enjoy wouldn't have happened because you have no more reports to, to even have the event and the host event. So that derails you. So that means that in that scenario, you would have gone on the wrong train and it would have taken you further away from your dream. Then you're going to say, well, since I have already promised these people the corporate membership and they go and they, they take yeah, over I'm, I'm everything, seeing. I got to go fucked. and build me another court, right? So you right, are right. much farther from you what you were now. That's what I'm saying is yep. when you're on the wrong train and you're going from Houston to, to, uh, to Dallas and you take the wrong train to Orlando, Florida, right? And I'm, I went to Tampa and I said, well, yeah, I'm in Tampa. Well, I'm much farther away from Dallas than I was in Houston. So right. this is where I'm saying is, you know, have you have to be, you have to embrace a slowness, you know, for the for right. lack of better word. Slow borrow, the fuck the, down. The, yeah. Slow the fuck down and figure it out if you're on the right path before you go. Because if you still have any doubt in it, right, that that means that you, chances are you're on the wrong train. And like I say, this is a need for everybody. I, I because like for you, you 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 want to be creative, you be fast. But the fastness is actually your your weakness because without having the right aim, the fastness just makes makes you further away faster. Agreed. Yeah, I agree. I mean, it, it, you just go yeah faster, further, <laughs> further, further away, faster. Um, awesome. All right. This is a good place to put a pin on it for today. So the question we can leave for everybody is: uh, Have you discovered your own tempo justo yet? Um, I think that changes over time too. Like you know, um, uh, but you know, just always make sure you're checking in and and spend the time to check in, right? I think that's really the moral of the story is making sure you're right on the right place. Check in. Um, yeah, make, we will make have, sure you uh, look around, see what you on the right train. I mean, exactly. Yeah. I mean, it's not it's not that complicated. It's just stop <laughs> and fucking look, you know, and mm -hmm. think. Um, uh, all right. Tomorrow we'll have part two. Um, and uh, looking forward to it as Sounds always. Good. And we'll see you then. Okay. Good night.